I'm going to be presenting this evening um, at the Emerging Science Program on the incidence of traumatic brain injury in retired NFL players. Certainly the whole world is familiar with the, the concussion crisis that's, that's evolved as a result of the initial studies um, by Dr. Bennett Amalu, which of course led to a movie um, that was released this year. Um, and with that, um, you know, they're finding that NFL players are now experiencing issues with memory, depression, anxiety, um, chronic headaches. And we had been, we've been evaluating the players since 2011 um, for these types of entities. We have an advanced newer imaging center in our facility um, with one of the large, I think, well, speaking with my radiologist, the largest normative database in the world. Um, so we were, um, we've been able to evaluate these guys using advanced neuroimaging called diffusion tensor MRI. So if you look at the initial studies and um, you look at you know, this pathological disorder, which is termed CTE or chronic traumatic encephalopathy, the consensus is that in order to suffer CTE, an individual must have experienced trauma and probably repetitive trauma. So nobody has ever shown any type of um, objective findings of trauma in living athletes, so this would be the first study. And we knew we had the technology available, we knew we had, we had the ability to use it, and we, most of all, we had the players. So it, was, it, was, it just made sense to, to kind of go ahead and start looking at them, and you know, we were very shocked at what we found. We found that on the diffusion tensor MRI, the advanced neuroimaging studies, that approximately 43% of the players um, had positive studies, which would be an objective biomarker of traumatic brain injury. Now, even more shocking was the fact that 30 those, of those, 30% um, actually had um, conventional MRI findings of traumatic brain injury, traumatic axonal injury, you know, something that any neuroimaging facility could, could check, pretty much. What we are doing now is because we are treating them. We are, um, first of all, we don't only do um, you know, advanced neuroimaging, we're also doing um, very, very detailed formal neuropsychological evaluations. We, we screen them for headaches, we screen them for sleep disorders, behavior disorders, and we treat all of those. Um, you know, we treat their headaches, we treat their sleep issues. If, if they need it, we'll send them for sleep studies, and some of them are overweight. We do, we do um, um, of course, um, medicines for, for depression, anxiety, if warranted, but we use a lot of behavioral. Um, we have behavioral counseling set up for them and neurocognitive rehab through, um, and, and many of them aren't local, so we, we, we have um, set up a network throughout the United States where we refer them out to various individuals that we trust to, to get them back to where, you know, at least try to rehabilitate them neurocognitively if that's possible. We don't know what this condition is. We, we found evidence of traumatic brain injury. Now, when we talk about it tonight, we'll talk on two realms. We'll talk on this, this piece of the puzzle, which I've been kind of, kind of talking about with other media outlets, whereby we know that you know, this is CTE, we know the end of CTE. We know that at the end, there's pathological brain changes. There's no objective evidence that this is a clinical disorder, first of all, and everybody needs to understand that. Um, certainly the, the media has portrayed it as such, but it, there really isn't any objective evidence. There's no objective evidence that playing football in the National Football League causes CTE. Um, there's hypothesis that getting hit in the head multiple times causes CTE. We can take this two ways. Finding an objective biomarker of trauma, head trauma, could be a possible link or piece of the puzzle. Or these individuals may just have traumatic brain injury. Individuals with traumatic brain injury experience chronic headaches. They experience neurocognitive disorders. They experience depression, anxiety, and emotional problems. So we, we kind of, we we're kind of going with that to treat them because that's the treatable, that's the treatable disease. Um, chronic traumatic encephalopathy right now would not be treatable. Um, there's a, there's, like I said, this is so early on. Um, we don't. We don't have. You know. We don't even. We don't even know if it's its own entity. If it's a subtype of Alzheimer's, um, and with that, we're actually we've added on um, advanced neuroimaging with um, beta amyloid PET scanning for these guys. We've done three of them so far. They all came back normal. So you know, we are we're taking it to the next step. Not only are we doing treating them, but we're actually looking further, and we're looking to get the tau biomarkers um, for the PET scanning. We have an IRB in to look at tau and beta amyloid in the spinal fluid. So you know, we're taking this to the next level. We're just going to continue to to build on what we found. I think they they make it harder. First of all, because there's no evidence that um, even repetitive trauma caused them to kill themselves or to become become sociopathic individuals. Um, 
first of all, we need the evidence. We need the science to say that before we make statements such as that. Um, if you talk with NFL players and you see enough, enough of them, you will understand that there is a lot of psychosocial aspects of why they can be depressed, of why they may want to kill themselves, because you know they've been playing this since they were five years old. And in football, it's not like other sports, other than you see Peyton Manning, even he went, didn't go out on a, you know, something, someone like Alan, where Derek Jeter went out on a, on a tour. You have Peyton Manning hanging it up after the Super Bowl. But I mean, he would be somebody who would, who would have a tour. But most players, it, it ends like this. And they will tell you the day they were cut. They will tell you what they were doing. They will tell you the moment it was. This is people with memory problems now. Will tell you that because it sticks. And then their life changes. And many are not prepared for what, what their life holds at that point. I can't comment on what should have been sooner because I wasn't there. Mm. Um, you know, there's certainly a movie made about that. There's, there's certainly a, a number of stories, League of Denial, did an interview with those guys actually on this very thing. Um, and um, I, I think you'd, you'd be better off asking them if, if it was, everything was done. Have they done enough? Probably not. Um, you know, they'll do, they'll do what they think is best. Um, they'll do, honestly, to be bluntly honest, they'll do what their legal representatives tell them is probably what they need to do. And, and, and you know, they're concerned, about, they're concerned about their image. There's a, if you talk to NFL players, there's a huge distrust amongst the players in the league, um, and even somewhat towards the Players Association. So, um, and that's why they come to us. They're seeking independent evaluations. So, I mean, I don't think I would have been involved seeing these players 15 years ago before this whole thing came to be, before the whole crisis came to be.